So today we are going to talk about the color quantum number of quarks and uh, before I begin with the need for such a quantum number let me first talk about this 3 3 by 2 plus baryonic decouplet which I have already discussed in my first two lectures. Well, here you can see the various quark assignments of the decoupled baryons having spin 3 by 2 plus. And uh, what's very interesting is the three particular cases here DDD, UUU, and SSS. And why is it so? Well, you can guess the reason being that the quarks are fermions, right? Spin half particles. So, Pauli's exclusion principle do apply for them. And in this, for these three particular deca baryons, decoupled baryons, these three cases, we have identical quarks. And so, there will be a problem in this regard. Let me now discuss this issue in detail. Well, you see, as I have talked to you before, that uh, baryons consisting of three quarks of the same flavor, the three cases I talked to you, they have the symmetric wave function under a quark exchange. Now, this suggests that both of them describing the that or sorry this suggests that both the term describing the space coordinates and that describing the flavor of all the 3 by 2 plus baryon wave function are symmetric under the exchange of the quark pair now the states ddu duu must therefore be symmetrized for instance the figure, uh, the state UDD in the previous figure represents a symmetric state under the exchange of any pair of quarks, which can be written as this, the factor being the normalization factor. Similarly, for other cases, the following 10 combinations are obtained. Now, you can do this following my lectures of previous class and also I have already discuss to you this uh, how to write the delta plus or delta plus plus wave function before but for the sake of completeness i have written all the cases here now there are only 10 completely symmetric combinations under the exchange of any quark pair right as i mentioned before as well this result presents a problem with the spin statistics you see, baryons are fermions and their wave function must globally be antisymmetric under the exchange of any two of three quarks. However, the space, spin and flavor wave function is symmetric under this exchange. So we have a problem. And the only way out of this problem is to postulate that quarks have additional degree of freedom, the color, and that the wave function corresponding to the color degree of freedom is anti-symmetric because then we can have the total baryon wave function like this which becomes anti-symmetric right so the total baryonic wave function is a product of four separate parts spin space spin flavor and color the color charge of a quark has three possible values red blue and green similarly anti quarks have anti color anti red anti blue and anti green denoted by r bar b bar and g bar okay now very important to note is that compared to the su3 flavor symmetry for the uds quarks here the su3 color symmetry is exact because in case of the UDS symmetry the mass of 
U and D is somewhat different while that of the S quark is very much different to both U and D. But for the but we consider that there is an approximate symmetry and then we talk about this UDS states together. So with this fact let me now move forward and uh, what we see here is that we have solved the issue of the wave function or basically the Pauli's exclusion violation issue regarding these three particular baryons delta plus plus delta minus and omega minus provided that they are completely empty symmetry in the one two three indices thus in conclusion we assume that there are nine different quarks which can be collected in the three by three matrix here the row refer to color and column to flavor like this u1 u2 u3 to s1 s2 s3 and this corresponds to the 3 comma 3 irreducible representation of this su3 flavor direct product su3 color group well next is something more just adding or introducing the concept of color isn't sufficient there are some more properties of color which can be inferred the first is that which we already talked about is that they will exist because any quark will exist in three different color states the second is that each of these states is characterized by the values of two conserved color charges color isospin and color hypocharge which are denoted by i3c and yc obviously these are the strong interaction analogues of the electric charge in electromagnetic interactions these charges depend only on the color states rgb and not on the flavors and i will show you the values of this for the different charges when i'll talk about them details through a problem later on now the third very important issue is that only states with zero values for the color charges are observable as free particles and these are called color singlets this this is the hypothesis of color confinement and uh, if i have time i will talk about it in the next set of lectures where i, I will show that this does indeed this is being predicted by the QCD quantum chromodynamics which is the theory of strong interactions so as I have just said before every natural occurring particle is a color single this is one of the hypotheses. and uh, with this let me now say that the color singlet wave function is this for mesons so suppose i ask you to show that for the mesons the color singlet wave function is this combination now how are you going to do that well you see we have already talked about the uds approximate symmetry before we have developed the entire mathematical technologies we have talked about the detailed use of ladder operators six types and whatnot so let us just use our technology here by replacing uds by rgb and then we will get the result in a very similar fashion so we start with the representation of rgb se3 color states through this simple matrices column matrices 100, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 001. Now, as I've already talked before, the color states will be labeled by two quantum numbers, color isospin and color hypercharge, which are analogs of I3 and Y. Now, you see in this two dimensional plot of I3C and YC, I have represented the R, G, and B colors, color states. Okay. 
So, what's more? We already know that we have to, we already know that only color singlet states can exist at free as free particles. Fine. So, to construct the color wave function for the hadrons, as I told before, just do this replacement. That is, we apply the results for AC3 flavor symmetry to AC3 color symmetry using this as a replacement. And then we apply the usual six ladder operators, which I have talked before in my previous class. And just to show an example here, this thing, again I am talking about, uh, you can see here, a very simple illustration of what is being meant by color singlet. So, one thing is very important to note that it is not sufficient to have I3C equal to 0 and YC equal to 0. We must also show that the operation of ladder operators, these six ladder operators, all yield 0 value as well. Then only, out of then only we will be able to say that a state is a singlet one. So let's now consider the meson color wave function and uh, we know mesons means of the type of QQ bar and uh, this is the operation that I have already talked to you before in my previous class in terms of UDS quarks but now this three direct product 3 being equal to 8 direct sum 1 scenario is being shown here in terms of RGB states and so we have this one this state which is a colored octet state and this colorless singlet state now this color confinement implies that hadrons can only exist in color singlet state so this must mean that the color wave function for mesons is this right good <clears throat> now you can also ask yourself can we find a qq q bar state that is by adding a quad to the above octet can we form a state with yc equal to zero and i3 is equal to zero and you can convince yourself by doing so that the answer is no and this is the reason why such q q q bar state bound states are not found in nature now on to the next scenario now i'm not going to ask you to show that for baryons you have to do the similar stuff similar using similar techniques because it will be a similar repetition although a bit, little bit more lengthy instead let me ask you that come on i give you i i say that this is the baryon color singlet wave function then demonstrate it to me that indeed it is so that is just verify it to me then how are you going to proceed well the first step is to check these things these two things that is i3c equal to 0 and yc equal to 0 and this you can indeed do so and you will find it once i give you the values of this i3 and y values and then what you have to do is you have to apply the ladder operators these are the ladder operators say for example i have just applied here t plus and the result is you can see zero similarly for the other cases the operation of this ladder operator gives zero as well so what next next is a very interesting application and before that let me tell you that uh, the general combination of m quarks and n quarks which we can write it like this having baryon with baryon number b greater than zero has a color wave function which may be written as this r alpha g beta b gamma and so on where this r alpha means that there are alpha quarks in the r color state now what we are going to do now we are going to demonstrate to you that by imposing the condition of color confinement we will show this condition m minus n equal to 3p where p is a non-negative integer and then i will show that there are so many other states which are not possible just like qq but also i will show you however yes i will also show you that 
Apart from just the mesons and baryons, there are many other exotic hadrons which are predicted to exist and we will talk about it. Okay, so you see this thing Qm, the basic, the first we start with this thing Qm and Q bar n. Okay, so these are the, this means that there are m quarks and n antiquarks. If this is so, then the, uh, then m just is equal to alpha plus beta plus gamma and n is equal to this. Now, as the baryon number b is greater than 0, so this means that m is greater than equal to n. Now, I am writing down here the color isospin charge I3C and the color hypercharge in this table below, which I have talked to you before. So, here is the table presented here. You note that the values for RGB are these ones and for the anti-quarks, they are just of opposite sign. Now, using this table, you can find that the color charge for this state, that is this particular state, Qm, Q bar n, is equal to alpha minus alpha bar by 2 minus beta minus beta bar by 2. Similarly, this is the value of color, color hypercharge. Right. Now, what next? What next is that we know by color confinement, both these color charges must be zero for observable hadrons. And this means that this two must be equal to zero. And if we do so, and assuming that alpha minus alpha bar equal to beta minus beta bar equal to gamma minus gamma bar is defined to be P, we get this relation M minus N equal to 3P. You can just do this on your copy and you can find it in yourself. This is a very simple algebra. Well, P is a non-negative integer. Thus, the only combinations allowed by color confinement are of this form. 3 Q P and Q Q bar N. Okay. It follows that a state with structure Q Q bar is not allowed. Now, why is it so? Because from this relation you will find that there exists no such value of p and n so that this state can exist. So, what other states can exist, right? Which is of quite interest to us. And to also check that indeed we can explain the existence of mesons and baryons. So, let's see here. Number one, suppose m is equal to one and n is equal to one. As a result, p is equal to zero. And then we have this combination, q, q bar. But yeah, you, we know this, right? These are just mesons. Now on to the next case. If m is equal to 3 and n is equal to 0, we get p is equal to 1. And then we have the q, q, q baryons. And after that, I have shown here three other cases. This should be 4, yeah, and this should be 5. Yeah, I have shown you the x, the predictions for existence of tetraquark, pentaquark and the dibaryon type hexaquark which are all collectively known as exotic hadrons. Fine. So this was a very interesting uh, exercise in itself. Now uh, before I finish let me tell you that it is also possible to predict this using a separate scenario technique and uh, which you know about already and what is that let's see this suppose I say that bound states of Q Q do not exist in nature well I have just showed this in the here right now you can do this also using the graphical method of finding if it is possible to form a color singlet from two color triplets so using our techniques which I have we, we have already talked before you can see 3 direct product 3 is equal to this these two states 6 plus 3 and we can see that there is no color singlet state which means that we this particular state 3 cross 3 cannot exist similarly if we talk about the bound states of q q q bar and q q bar q bar then also what we start with is we start with the meson scenario 3 cross 3 bar we write down these two states 
and then the addition of another quad to either the octet or the singlet we can see from this above figure will never give us a state with these two values which again means that no such color singlet state exists and as a result the bound states for this q q q bar and q q bar q bar do not exist so with this i end my today's talk